Hey, what's going on, movie lovers all over the world? You already know who it is. It's your boy, Mikey Savage 21, bringing you another movie review. And today, I'm going to be reviewing the film Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Stick around. The strange things going on all over the city. The people behind this are not like you and me. There's a hidden society. It goes back centuries. Yesterday, a wizard entered New York with a case. A case full of magical creatures. All right, so getting straight into it, I got to say, it's been a couple of hours since I've seen the film. I caught it last night, but then I also had the opportunity to check it out on Thursday. But I just really wanted to get a real good feel for this movie because it has been a while since I've watched anything from the wizarding world of Harry Potter. And as you guys don't know, this is set 70 years prior to the Harry Potter franchise that we are familiar with. And I have not read the books also, so I'm gonna go ahead and state that outright. I've read all the original Harry Potter books, but I have not read the new Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them book because I wanted to go in this with a fresh open mind because I will say reading the books and then watching the movies when it came to Harry Potter, it was somewhat disappointing sometimes because there were some really cool things that were cut out of the book. But then again, I know that they couldn't add it in because of budgets or they couldn't add it in because the director wanted to take it in a different direction and certain things were changed. But I wanted to go into this fresh without having the weight of the book pretty much tearing my mind the entire time and trying to set up, whoa, this is what the standard should be. But anyway, getting into it. So the way I'm going to do it is just like last time. I'm going to talk about my likes. I'm going to talk about the dislikes. I'm going to go in depth a little bit, but this is going to be completely non-spoilers. All right, so getting straight into it. One of the things that I really liked was the return to the Wizarding World. Because again, it has been a couple of years since we've had anything Harry Potter related. Again, this is excluding the books. But I'm not going to lie, when they had the big epic, you know, conclusion at the end of the Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince Part 2, and they had the big conclusion, I was like, I want more. I want more. I get that the actors are older now, and that the story's kind of played out. Same thing with the Twilight series. You know, we had these big franchises come to an end, and I wanted to see them continue. And now that we're returning to the Wizarding World, it was just so amazing to see everything back again i know this is completely different because again this is set 70 years before harry potter so the sets were a little different the time period was different um the characters the way that they dressed and the way that they talked were different so overall it was just a really refreshing feel to get back into the wizarding world now the next like i had was the introduction to newt scamander right off the bat as soon as he steps off the train we see that he's this awkward, you know, quiet, shy guy who has this this timid meek about him, this timid, shy personality about him. But at the same time, he's a little bit snarky as well. And I gotta say, I love Eddie Redmayne's performance here. Fantastic job, again, of the introduction of Newt's commander. And I love how throughout the film, they, he explains and how they convey to the audience that the beast that he is carrying in his suitcase, they're not bad. They're not evil. They're not bad. He loves these beasts, and he's trying to essentially write a book about them so he can educate other wizards who are persecuting and killing these creatures and beasts that he has safely secured inside of his suitcase and that he is essentially harboring and protecting and nurturing and releasing back into the wild in their respective homelands. So I like how, again, Newt's commander is not just this one-sided wizard. We have many depths and layers to him, even at one point where he meets up with Alison Sadol's character, uh, Queenie Goldstein. There's a little back and forth between them where she's a mind reader and she essentially reads his mind and we get a little bit more in depth about him. So I like, again, the introduction to Newt's commander and I like all the many layers that we had to him. All right, speaking of Allison Sadol, this leads me to my next light, which is the great character introductions for the rest of the supporting cast. Now, Katherine Watterson, I gotta say, was at the top of her game here. I loved her portrayal of Teeny, uh, excuse me, I can't talk today, Tina Goldstein. 
I absolutely loved her portrayal. I loved how as soon as we meet her, we kind of can tell, huh, she's kind of got this, I'm paid by the numbers person. I'm an uptight, you know, businesswoman, and I got business I got to take care of. But then again, we peel back the layers and we see that there's more to her. And we even possibly see a possible love interest going on with her and Newt's commander. Uh, again, Catherine Watterson <clears throat> did a fantastic job here. Now, Dan Folger, I have got to commend him here. Now, I've seen him in a slew of films, but I think he was really put to the forefront here. His acting and his comedic chops were really put to the forefront of portraying this character of Kowalski and how we essentially get introduced to him and he wants to open up his own bakery because he is tired of working in the can factory. He just got back from the war. And again, this is set 70 years before Harry Potter, so this is set in the time when there was a lot of depression and war going on. So I like how he was just different from the rest of the human characters. Again, all of these characters were different in their own outright, but I like how he was just so different from the other humans because even when he finally figures out that magic is real, he is not as skeptical about it and just kind of writes it off. He does have one scene where he kind of runs off because he's like, okay, I'm dreaming, I'm dreaming. But once he accepts it, he's just like, you know what? Wizards aren't bad. What is the big deal? He gets to meet all the beasts and he sees that there is more to these creatures than just being fearful and being scary in their way they look. Again, Ezra, Mer Ezra Miller, I love his character of Credence Barbone. Um, I really felt for him throughout the film. You see that he's this abused child and that Samantha Morton's character is just simply abusing him and beating him with the belt and he has all these scars. And then I like the faux relationship that he has with Colin Farrell's character of uh, Percival Graves. I also enjoyed John Voight as well uh, as uh, Henry Shaw Sr. because I haven't really seen John Voight in anything I like personally since Holes. Holes was the last film that I really, really enjoyed him in. So it was good to see him in there. And again, the rest of the characters from uh, Carmen Aljago's character. Loved seeing her. Uh, again, Allison Sadol was great as Queenie Goldstein. I like the love interest that she has with Dan Fogel's character of uh, Kowalski. All right, so getting to the next thing I like. I like the newly added lore. They added a lot of lore to this because you have 70 years before you have to catch up to the Harry Potter franchise that we know. So you have a lot of time to add in this new lore. And so they've added in this new Obscurus rule, which is certain people who are suppressed and not able to really use their magic to their full potential. Essentially, they're having to hide it and it's building up inside of them and coming out as this force. So I like how you essentially have that throughout the film as well, being possibly one of the villains of, you know, of the time period. Because at this time period, it set in where the Salem Witch Trials and all that was going on and... and you know, people feared witches and people feared wizards and, and anything dealing with magic, anything outside of the realm of reality that we knew here on Earth. So I like how they added the new lore to that to make it essentially more dangerous. They set it up to make it more dangerous because, again, we're at a time period where they really can't expose themselves or can't really use their magic to their full potential unless they want to get exposed. And the last thing I liked here was the question of who is the real villain. Now, we get shades of who the villain might be in Colin Farrell's portrayal of Percival Graves, but then you also have the Obscurus, who is a real villain, and then you also have the overall shadow of Grindelwald, who is committing all these heinous acts in the muggle world. So essentially you have this discussion, who is the real villain? And you could also say that humans in this are the real villain because they're not willing to upset wizards and other little worldly creatures. They're not willing to understand it. So essentially you have this square of who the real villain is. It could be Grindelwald, it could be Percival Graves, it could be the Obscurus, or you could say that it's the humans. So essentially, who is the real villain? All right, so getting to my dislikes, the only dislike that I really had for this film was Johnny Depp's cameo. And I think it was ruined for me because I'm so steep in movie knowledge to try to always keep up on it. I heard that he was making a cameo appearance and that he was eventually was revealed that he's playing the character of Grindelwald. So when he finally appeared on screen, it wasn't a surprise to me. I kind of figured it out because I was like, okay, we haven't seen a cameo from him yet. And they keep telling us and mentioning this Grindelwald character throughout the film. And because I know Johnny Depp is playing this character and that he's gonna cameo in here, when they finally reveal who he is towards the end of the film, I'm just kind of like, oh, I saw that coming a mile away. But again, 
that was the only dislike I had, and that was more so of a personal dislike. I didn't necessarily like his uh the way he betrayed Grindelwald. Uh, his one liners weren't that great, but you know, I, again, I can't really judge him off of a few lines. I have to see how he is in the next film because in the next film they said he has a way bigger role than what he did in this one. So getting to my score of this film, I'm gonna give this film a solid eight out of 10. I absolutely enjoyed the film. I love being able to return to the wizarding world. It is so great, it's so refreshing to see a new slew of characters. And I gotta say, I really appreciate J.K. Rowling. I love her coming back for this. And once these five films are over with, I plan to go back and read the books. So that way I'm not, you know, trying to tailor my mind to the way the book is. So then when I see the movie, I'm like, well, that's not ha how it happened. Well, that's not how it happened. This has changed. Because again, it's subject to opinion and things are gonna change. Sometimes things that are in a book aren't gonna transfer real well onto a film. They belong inside of just a book. But again, guys, I'm giving this film a solid eight out of 10. What did you think of the film? Please let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Thank you for tuning into this video. Make sure you follow me on all the social media platforms at I Am Testify. And as I always say, peace out.